All right, you little manlets, I have to be transparent with you. I don't wanna make this video today. The price action on Bitcoin is absolute ass. It is flat, unwiped, unattractive, Taylor Swift bum. I want nothing to do with it. That being said, somewhere in the last life, I up really bad and somehow signed up to be your savior and provide you the income to pay for all your child's funds and all the fancy comic books and only fan girls you want to support thus i have to make this video because i am seeing in the market right now about eight to ten coins that are going to pomp go nuts big chunky non-trailer swift thick gains the second bitcoin stops being approved stops playing just the tip because I'm seeing something very similar to what we saw in November. We saw the same prudish Bitcoin action, Bitcoin go and the Bitcoin and then the coins we got into the 8, 10, 20 X. And it is happening again. The market is prepped like a guy who's eating 64 cheesy RB bean burritos. He is primed. He's ready to go. And Bitcoin, like always, is acting like a butt. That being said, unlike a Cardano holder, there are limits to how much we can be cucked before we get angry. Things are about to get ugly, but I think we are in luck. Why? I'll say it twice, because I know the IQ of the viewer of this channel, it's below that of a spider monkey. So here it is. We are very likely to see a second run starting here soon. And when we do, I believe this list of projects and coins I'm about to get into in this video, I think they're going to pump. I think they're going to unleash the walls the butt plug will be removed and the 64 <laughs> cheesy burritos will be unleashed upon the world. And you should listen because we are in a very similar position to where we were last year. We saw this happening, we got in, pop. Just look at Super, look at recently, GPU, an easy 40X in a month. Cedify's up 10X. Heck, Dester's up four or five X since we called it just a few weeks ago. And I think we're about to see something even nastier. And you might be wondering how I know this, how can I predict this? And frankly, I find it offensive that you even have to ask at this point. Because as you know, I am the most woke, empty house, most popular crypto fat advice guy with a great body who is extremely family friendly and PG. And you are a scrawny, unfed lad. So do everyone a favor, get your wife out of the room. You already have enough marriage problems as it is. Bring your kids in. Say, everyone, this guy is PG as f I want to show you what an actual man looks like. I want you to watch your father figure out how to pay for your college fund by watching a guy screaming poop and cuckold jokes on the internet. This is where you get your financial information. Nothing wrong with that. Because jokes aside, what we're seeing in the market right now is weird. Because we're seeing Bitcoin being topped off. It keeps getting blocked at 70K. It's doing this weird thing, you know? And it's gonna move soon, I swear. I've put in calls to all the right people. I've called Satoshi Nakamoto. I've called Larry Fink of BlackRock. I've even called Kathy Woods. I've said, stop this shit. pump this coin. Well, I'm not inviting you to my next birthday party. And let me tell you, woo, woo, those things are a f***ing rager. Everyone comes, eats 64 Chipotle burritos, wears an adult diaper, longest one to survive, gets a billion dollars. Nancy Pelosi being the four time winner as the queen, the patron saint of the pomp and dump. Of course she wins. She always wins. That's what I'm doing when I turn 36. But no, seriously, what we're seeing in the market right now is weird because usually when Bitcoin is getting blocked like this, we're gonna see altcoins getting dumpish. They're gonna start dropping down. And what we're seeing in AI and gaming right now particularly is weird because we're actually seeing these coins going up. And so what does this mean? What is, what is going to happen? As soon as Bitcoin stops blocking the market and gets back on track to going up, which I think is about to happen, these things are going to go nuclear. It's like we got a baby gorilla, okay? And then we just injected it with tons of uppers and bath salts and just fed it like 15 Red Bulls. And then we just locked this baby gorilla in a little closet and he's just clawing at the door. As soon as that door gets open, we're in a lot of trouble because PETA is, is gonna f us up. We're going to jail for animal abuse 100%. But seriously, this baby gorilla that is these altcoins, they're about to go nuts. Assuming Bitcoin keeps going up, this is going to get out of hand. And what we saw last market is Frankly, altcoins really didn't start moving until Bitcoin blew past its all-time high. I'm not talking like when it got a few inches past, it's when it blew past its all-time high. And while we've seen altcoins and the coins we like to invest in this channel, yeah, we've seen them do 10, in some cases 20Xs. Heck, GPU is up 40X from when we talked about last month. Woohoo! That, that's, I, I like that, I'm not gonna lie. That said, we really didn't see altcoins start to move 
last market until Bitcoin really got moving. And what we're seeing right now is, yeah, a little bit of retail is back. The masses are starting to look at crypto again. But what we're really seeing right now is institutions buying Bitcoin and all the dirty degenerates that have always been in crypto, they're just incessantly trading and slushing money around. When we see the masses start to pour back into crypto, which I think is going to start happening at like an 85, 90K Bitcoin, that's when we're going to see these altcoins start to go nuts. Because what people are going to do is they're going to look at Bitcoin at 80,000 and say, huh, I don't know if I want a 2X. And they're going to look at Ethereum and they're going to say, ah, that's a 3X. And they're going to look at Cardano and be like, I don't like watching other men my wife, so I don't think that's the coin for me. I have some common self-respect. I'm not a Chuck E. Cheese employee. I'm not a four foot nine, 250 pound manlet. I don't live underneath my staircase like Harry Potter while my wife dates a six foot five Swedish man above me. I don't know if I'm gonna be investing in Cardano. Seems like a weird place to be. And so after they get past that, after they get past the king of cuck coins of Cardano, they're going to move down to the altcoins. They're going to move down to the smaller coins. And everyone in the market is going to say, where do I make these legendary crypto coins at? And it's going to be coins outside the top 100, like we saw last market. And that's when we really start to see coins to their 10, 20, 30, 50 Xs. That's when a lot of money was made right before everybody lost all their money, which we will be talking about in this video. This comes with tremendous risk. Please read this disclaimer. This is absolute gambling. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is not financial advice. 90% of people in crypto lose all their money. Please watch my risk and dump video. There is very little chance you actually make money here if you're a newcomer to crypto. Like none, you're dead, you're screwed. That being said, you're not gonna listen to my warnings. You're not gonna heed my advice because you, like me, are a piece of shit. So. Let's talk about the market really quickly. And then I want to show you the projects and coins I'm looking at because, well, if the market keeps going, this is going to get exciting. So let's dive into it. So th this is what I'm talking about here first off. So if we look at like Destra, we, we mentioned this a couple weeks ago and the thing's already up from four cents to 22 cents. And I didn't point that on video, but I did point out on Twitter and you should be following me on Twitter if you... <laughs> If you want to see these things as I'm seeing them, it takes me forever to make these videos. You should follow me there for more up-to-date stuff. The thing is, Bitcoin keeps being very weird the, the past two weeks. It just keeps getting blocked and blocked. And we see coins like this showing a ton of strength. If they're showing strength while Bitcoin is like doing this capish kind of dance that it's doing right now, they're going to pop off when Bitcoin moves. And what we're seeing in the market right now that is huge is, look, so Bitcoin historically has always worked like a, a butt plug, as we said earlier in the video. That's, that's, the, that's what the stock traders on Wall Street call it. That's the professional book term. So we'll just use that. Bitcoin has worked as a butt plug to the market. It stops all the really nasty crap from coming out and really slows down the market. And so if we go and look at last bull run, let's go back to here. You can see that if we go and look at Bitcoin, let's say, zoom out to right here, okay? Before, <laughs> if we look at when everybody lost all their money too. So you can see Bitcoin got up to about 30,000 right here, all right? It almost doubled its last all-time high. And so let's look at the date on that. That's about January, uh, it's January 1st, January 2nd right here, okay? So if we go look at that and we then go look at altcoins. So we look at BNB. This is one of the best performers last run. All right, I think Solana is pulling this kind of move this run. So we go look at BNB during this time frame. You can see BNB didn't really start moving until uh, January 14th, 15-ish. So there was about a 20-day delay on it once Bitcoin doubled its all-time high. And so what am I trying to point out from here? If we go look at BNB's price action before Bitcoin hit its 30K, it's all time high or whatever. You can see it looked very, very crazy out of control. You're like, okay, this, this coin has definitely made its move. There's no gains to be left. Nothing was further from the truth. And you can see once Bitcoin made its second move up, okay? So what we saw right here is Bitcoin went and made its initial move. It made its initial move up about right here. And people really were not sure. It went past all-time high and people still weren't really like FOMOing and buying altcoins. Then it made its convincing move up. And once this happened, this is when everybody just said, okay, screw it, I'm in. And things really got out of control. Coins that we saw that were already up 10X did another 30X. And so if we went back to the market at this time 
And we were looking at Bitcoin and it was diddling around 17,000, 18,000. It's old, all time high, which we're seeing right now. We need to look at what coins are moving like BNB was prior to Bitcoin making its second leg up. And so we look at coins like BNB or we look at coins that used to be good like Cardano. I mean, we go zoom in before Bitcoin hit its all time high. You know, Cardano used to be a really cool place. There used to be tons of chads. There used to be tons of cool people there, babes everywhere, everyone investing in Cardano. It was a really cool place. And then all the cool people convinced all the cuckolds and, and little four foot nine Chuck E. Cheese employees to come buy their, all their bags at $3. And, and then it really got, it, it turned into a weird place. Just, just a weird room of shirtless little hairy men all mad that their wives weren't talking to them. This, this, this is when it got nasty, but Cardano used to be a hell of a coin before it turned into the world's worst investment. And so Cardano moved a ton back then. So if we looked at coins like Cardano, BNB, and looked at the narratives that were forming, and then we got into those before Bitcoin made its second leg up, whoo, you really could have just skipped out on the entire bull run, just gotten in then and made oodles of cash. And so, Look, on this channel, I, backing up a little bit of excitement right here, I know everyone's getting excited about the market. There is a good chance that we could just see the stock market peak and everything reverse from here, and then we just all go straight back to Hades. <laughs> we have to wait another two to three years to do this crypto thing again. My thesis is we're at least going past 100K. I think we're going to see a second leg, and I'm pretty certain of that. Well, certain isn't the right world. It's like if, if we're at a, at a casino table right now and we're playing roulette, um, I'm looking at the, the table right now and we're putting it on red or black, but this time instead of red paying a two X red pays a 30 X. And so I'm like, look, we got 50, 50 shot here. I don't know where this ball is going to land, but I know if we land on red, I'm going to 20 or 30 X my money. If we land on black, I'm just going to lose the money I have in. And so your job in crypto, if I can drop the jokes for a second. Your job in crypto is not to predict where the market is going to go. Uh, I had a friend on crypto who posted this, who's way more intelligent than I am, who stated very clearly something like this, that your job in crypto isn't to predict the space, it's to make really solid bets. And in my point of view, Bitcoin going to at least 100K is an extremely solid bet. It having another leg up is an extremely solid bet. It has lopsided payouts. And while the risk of us losing all of our money is always there, and while there is no certainty to be had, one thing that I can be very certain of is that if we see another leg, we are likely going to see huge giant gains in altcoins. Is we want to say, all right, last run, what happened? Bitcoin crossed all time high, had its second leg up, what then happened? The altcoin market went insane. So how do we position for that again? And what are the narratives, what are the niches that have the strongest potential in this market? That's what we're going to talk about. Now, before we get into these projects, just full transparency, I own, or even in some cases, advise and consult a lot of these coins for money. I built nine-figure SaaS companies. Usually what I do when I make an investment, I try to go heavy. And if I go heavy in investment, I also like to reach out to the company and say, hey, let me help you. Let me give you guys a little bit of coaching because I've been working in digital advertising and building tech companies my entire life. So of course, before we get into a lot of these coins, there's a lot of these that I'm invested in. There's a lot of these that I've consulted for, for money. And that's as transparent as I can be with you. If you ever want to know what coins I'm invested in, so you never have to guess, there is a list on my Twitter at ZSS Becker of all my investments and advisories. If I'm going to talk about coins I like, there's going to be some crush costs. The best I can do is be completely transparent transparent with you. That also being said, I'll be talking about a lot of projects I'm not invested in as well, because I can only have so many bags. I can only have my dick split so many ways. Ew. I can only have my finger in so many honey jars before it starts to just get gross. So, so look, I'm going to start from biggerish coins, kind of safer coins. And like always, I'm going to work my way down to the more higher risk or even just completely brand new coins that are in the market. And the way you should be viewing this is one, there is no such thing as a safe coin in crypto. All of these have absolute potential to do 95, 100% losses. I'm, I'm talking just pff, all your money gone. There's no such thing as like, oh, I'm going to play on the safe end. No, the second your dick is in the pencil sharpener, it is in the pencil sharpener. If this thing turns on, we are all hosed. There's no safe place where you can hide. Your dick is going to get mangled. And everyone in, in the classrooms be like, dude, why are you pencil sharp and you're like it seemed like i've got an idea but look seriously it's, it's we're all at risk here there's no such thing as a non-risky thing in crypto the way you should be viewing this is that the ones i'm going to mention first are going to have the least volatility in this this bull market so for example 
if we got into something like AVAX, you can see when Bitcoin is, is tiddling around and being goofy, AVAX has, you know, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20% pullbacks. Whereas we're in something that's doing really, really well right now, like Citus, we'll talk about this here in a sec, but you can see Citus has gone from like 60 or what, what those, I can't see cause I wear these damn glasses. So I can play some fictional WWE character to keep your attention. Cause you guys are five-year-olds, you're babies. You can't just watch me make a video and give you information. You're like, no, make cuckold and poop jokes and scream and act like Hulk Hogan, then I'll watch it. Look at my views. There's there's honestly some truth to that. All the other crypto channels where you have like this intelligent guy giving great advice who's been doing this for 10 years, no one watches it. But the, the guy who's running around with his shirt off talking about his dick, you're like, ah, <laughs> that's, that's where I want my financial education. So by all means, you little f let's let's do it. So look, Citus, this got up to 80 cents before and dropped all the way to 40 cents. So we saw like, a 50% dip on this thing before it then went back up to 10 cents and made its next leg up. So as we're talking about these coins, expect as I get lower into them, <clears throat> they're gonna have way more volatility. And if you're not looking to lose money and you don't, you can't deal with stress, you really shouldn't be dealing with these smaller ones. You should stick to the, the bigger ones I'm gonna talk about. So if we're gonna start anywhere, of course, if we want to North coin, excuse me, North star coins, you're not gonna go wrong with Solana. You're not gonna go wrong with AVAX. AVAX is where I would be starting at. I think Solana could get all the way up to $800 this bull run. If we keep going, it's gonna go nuts, just like BNB did last bull run. I think even $800 could be bearish. So the, the sky's really the limit on Solana, but the thing is we're also gonna see Card, not, not Cardano, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not crazy. Uh, we're not, we're not, we're gonna see AVAX probably do similar moves. So if Solana goes up to like a $400 million market cap, Solana is gonna go to like 150 million or something like that. I mean, AVAX is gonna go to 150 million, something like that. And so if we just want a bit like big safe gains, we just we just go straight into the AVAX. We're probably not gonna do that. I have a big bag of AVAX, but really <laughs> we're into the hard stuff on this channel. We don't. We don't smoke cigarettes. We skip straight to the meth. We're going to start on the two niches we like the most in crypto. And that's going to be AI and gaming. Now, look, three things. I've made separate videos on AI and gaming. I will link to them at the end of this video on why those markets are going to be huge. I'm not going to do that because those are 30-minute videos. If you want to understand those spaces, which you should, you should maybe pursue understanding what you're investing in. But ah, <laughs> screw that. Uh, you don't need that. But on a serious note, you should watch those videos because then they will explain everything behind these markets and my lack of Wi-Fi. It will explain everything you need to know about that. Then there's a third video you should watch that explains how I research and buy microcap coins so that, my young friend, you don't just have to copy trade me. I don't suggest you buy anything I talk about in this channel. I suggest you look at my thought processes and use it to pick coins of your own. There are so many coins that are great that you can discover before they move. You should use those thought processes that I'm using here because that's what I constantly use to find coins that do really well. And that is what's going to serve you best. You're not really going to stand a chance in these markets unless you can pick coins of your own. By all means, I'm here to point in the general direction I'm thinking and share my notes with you. But if your entire strategy is copy my notes, you're not going to do well because then again, you should watch my fourth video. I'll link to in the description at the end of this video that covers the massive dump and how most people lose in crypto. It's because they don't, they can't pick coins of their own. They don't know enough about the coins they're buying to actually find sell points. And so they buy these coins, they go up and everybody gets super happy and then they lose all their money. 90% of people in crypto lose all their money. If you're watching this video, there is a one in 10 chance you're going to leave this money with mar this market with money. So, Again, watch those videos, get to know about what you're doing here. That said, these markets are showing the most strength. And so if I'm starting anywhere in these markets, let's start with the bigger kind of North Star coins. So like always in gaming, Beam has already done its leg up. Super has already done its leg up. And I think Echelon Prime is gonna do its leg up. I really like Immutable X. That's kind of like the third horseman in the portfolio. Actually, for making a four horseman portfolio. Why are we doing this? Because I think I think having a four horseman portfolio sounds cool. There's frankly no reason why you should have four leading coins, but it sounds sick. 
So if we're going to pick like the four horsemen of gaming, the biggest, safest coin is going to be IMX. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Beam and Super. I think these both have a 10x in them. Okay, Beam is sitting at a market cap of... 1.5 to 1.7 right now. I think a $10 billion market cap is definitely on the table. I think with Super, I think a $5 billion market cap is definitely on the table by the end of this bull run. Echelon Prime is also just a super duper coin. I don't have it because I don't, again, need my finger in so many honey pots. Echelon Prime, I think, is going to do bonkers numbers. I think I go to a $10 billion market cap. However, Beam is just a must-have. Super is a must-have. I would consider Echelon Prime to be a must-have. I don't have any. And Ronin is also a no-brainer. I don't know what the heck is going on with Floki. That thing seems pumpy as hell. If you want kind of meme coin potential, there you go. But I, I stick to the Four Horsemen portfolio because the name is awesome. If anybody asked your investment thesis, that's as good as, as any in crypto. They're all Ponzi coins. It's all stupid. But if it has a cool name... That's, that's why it works. That's why we got stuff like the sandbox. Doesn't that sound cool? Everyone's like, what are you investing in? The sandbox. And they go, what's the sandbox? You say, I don't know. And I don't think many people play it. And I have no idea what the currency does, but it's the sandbox. Buy it now. And that is that is crypto investing for you. Now, if we're going into AI, there are so many good coins that have already had massive moves in AI. Akash, near. Render, all fantastic. But we're not here to get sloppy thirds. We're here to get into the juice. So if I'm gonna start anywhere in AI, I'm gonna start at, this is one of my bigger holds in AI. This thing I think is going to go to bit tensor render near levels. And so we get an easy five to 10 X here on iOS. Now, my pronunciation of that coin is gonna change every time I, I, I mention it. I know the founders pretty well, so I'm gonna have to be like, hey, how do you say your coin? But let's not even act, give the facade that I'm an educated investor here. Let's just keep rolling with it. The thing you gotta understand about AI market caps and gaming market caps is AI market caps can get way higher than gaming market caps. In my opinion, gaming is like the safer, more consistent uh, leg up. AI is very, very all over the place. For example, if you look at one of my second favorite big coins here. This thing is all over the place. Pal is just, it's, it's all over the place. And that's because the market caps in AI can get a lot bigger, but they're also a lot more turbulent. So keep that in mind when you're picking the niches to get into. That's why I kind of have a mix of gaming, which is a more discovered market. It was around last point and then AI, which is kind of the newer sexy kid on the block, this market. So if I'm going to start anywhere, I'm going to start at AOS. It's a fantastic coin uh, to lead a, an a AI portfolio. Now, if we're getting into semi-big second coins, where I'm gonna go first is let's talk about gaming. So I've really isolated my gaming portfolio down to a few coins, because I think they get exposure in gaming, we really just need to do this. So I'm all in on Beam, I'm all in on Super, and I'm all in on Cetify. I think these coins are going to run very well if we're looking for a five to 10X exposure that's where we're looking at. Now, there's a lot of other individual games I'm gonna get into, but I'm trying to just give like a brief, chunky 10 to 15 coin portfolio right here. I'm not getting into my entire 30, 40 coin portfolio, which I do talk about in another video that is linked in the description. If you wanna see every coin I'm invested in as of a month ago, I'd go there. That being said, I'm gonna lower down everything to super, Beam, Cetify. I'm really bullish on Miria to move up to uh, Beam's market cap. It's currently, I think Miria can easily get to a billion. And then if I'm going a bit deeper, where I'm gonna be starting at is Citus. I think Citus has a lot of a lot of gas left in the tank because they're doing a lot of things similar to Cetify. They're burning coins like crazy. And they're doing all the things you want to see a coin doing in a bull market. Look, I'm going to be straight with you. In a bull market, yes, the game and the project and the fundamentals matter. But what matters most in a bull market is the marketing and tokenomics combined with the narrative behind it. And then having a strong narrative. Citus has the strong narrative, but what they're also doing is they're creating all sorts of extra demand for the coin using launch pads and the burning of their coin. And as you can see, or what the good news is, is a lot of the fully diluted market cap isn't releasing until 
deep into 2025. And so we're really stuck with this market cap right here that is constraining and crunching it all together. And so the coin has a lot of fundamentals behind it that are going to allow it, I think, to keep pumping really hard. And if there were, were two other coins that have to go in, the other one that I, I just don't see on this list right here, which is weird, but also good for us, is going to be Crown. Gambling in crypto has... I think is the strongest use case of gaming, but I, I really got all into gambling uh, a few months ago. The actual, well, I, we're, we're gambling here already. This is, this is, <laughs> if you're looking for a hit, we've already been, uh, we've already been in the casino for a while. But when it comes to gambling cryptos, aka uh, cryptos that enable gambling, I really got all in on it. But the, the market really hasn't picked up on those coins besides Crown. So I've just kind of isolated my entire gambling portfolio because I don't need to be in AI and gaming and then gambling. I've just isolated all the Crown because they're partnering with the Kentucky Derby. They have the best NFT ecosystem if you ever seen horse racing you know you raise horses and breed them and then sell their time and then run them for money that's all encapsulated in their nft market they're partnered with all the right people they have the most players they have the most people actively making money playing the game and so i'm just like all my chips and gaming are over there and then my cheekiest gaming coin right now that i'm really heavily in is is moon tropica because again like i stated in bulls it's not just about the fundamentals it's really, I mean, every coin out there, there's, there's coins that have great fundamentals and great games that are getting no movement. That's because what crypto is at its core is narrative and hype and tokenomics. How, what is the story behind this coin? How excited are people of it? And how hard is it to get your hands on the coin? How it's the supply of the coin? If there are tons of coins flooding in the market, that's going to drive price down. If there are tons of coins leaving the market and it's limited, it's going to drive price up when you combine with the hype and narrative. These are the things that factor into bull markets. So of course, Moontropic has a great game, but they're also doing all the same things with their tokenomics, very similar to Sice. And I think they have the loudest meme coin-like uh, community in all of gaming. If you go anywhere, it's not exactly something I like. I'm gonna be completely straight with you, but their, their community is extremely loud and cultish. Which, why, when I was digging around looking for another coin to go deeply in in gaming, this is why I went with Ka. They got the game, they got the players, but they also have a cult. If you look at any coins that have cults, for example, the reason I hate Cardano is it's a cult. A terrible, terrible, annoying cult full of five foot one manlets that are very upset. They haven't been laid in years. They live exclusively off of eating hemorrhoid cream because their wife will not feed them anymore. The entire family was hoping they would just die off take their debts with them, but they got into the hemorrhoid cream in the basement and they're not living off of it like cockroaches. That's who makes them up and you just can't get rid of them. That being said, I think the cult of Ka is on its early phase, similar to how Cardano was in its early phase. And I think this can go and do huge numbers for all the reasons I mentioned. Not just the game, but the hype and the narrative and the cult like following behind it and the loudness, I think will allow it to do silly numbers. So that's where I'm kind of standing at in gaming. And so my gaming portfolio has kind of gone a lot more simpler. I've, I've isolated a lot of the gambling coins to one coin. I've isolated a lot of my bets to these coins I mentioned. And the only other coin I'd probably throw in there is like Altura, which is a really underrated infrastructure coin. And of course, there's a lot of really good coins in there. I'm just I'm just showing you my new moves. Ronin, really good coin. Wilder World, really good coin. Doing serious numbers. Big time, really good coin. Star Atlas, fantastic. And of course, Echelon Prime ties into both of these. I don't know why I'm not in invested in Echelon Prime, to be honest. So, so now let's talk AI. I think AI is about to do stupid things. It, 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 gaming, we caught that run up. I think gaming is going to keep going up and up and up here. I think AI is going to do dumb things because people don't really know how to price this. And I think we're getting in the price discovery really soon. And we're going to see tons of these coins that I mentioned going to billion dollar market caps. When gaming was in price discovery last run, the market caps were just stupid. It was like new coin. Here's $200 million market cap. Enjoy. Th that's what we're kind of seeing here. But these projects have such a strong use case narrative and cults behind them that it's just like, ooh. Plus, the really huge thing driving the AI narrative is we have NVIDIA and all these insane valuations going on in real-world adult investing. And that's getting transferred down here. And people who are in the masses that are moving into crypto and saying, where can I make my nut at? 
they get AI and they get gaming and they see the AI stocks going well and they go, hmm, I'm catching the next wave of AI. And so this has just a trifecta of use case plus narrative plus hype uh, plus understanding in the masses. And so I think we're just going to see silly things here. So going down from AI's network, PAL and 0x0 Zero Zero are just staples of a good AI portfolio. Echelon Prime, very good staple that also lead the portfolio. Now look, there's a few coins we can of course mention. They have really made a huge charge. Recently, uh, Node AI, I think this thing's going to a bill market cap. On top of that, a lot of these coins have revenue sharing with how they're running out their GPUs and their processors. And look, in my AI video, I break down how AI coins work and why the coins are valuable and how they'll be used on the networks to pay for processing power or manage the integration of the chatbots. I'm not gonna do that so much in this video. We're just talking about pumps in this video, just being straight with you. AI, every AI coin works a little bit differently and, and the value is in the nuance and the salty of the differences between the coins, at least when it comes to the fundamentals and the narrative. Really, it's also about the marketing and the noise and the hype behind the coin. That said, AI, are uh, that said, gaming coins are really easy to understand. It's either a game where the coin is going to be used for in-game assets or a studio where it's going to be used for the in-game assets in the, in the game or it's infrastructure that's going to be facilitating the transactions and NFTs and whatnot in the game. It's very easy to understand gaming coins. AI coins are a little bit more big brain to understand. And so what you need to understand about AI coins is they're either managing the infrastructure of things like chatbots, the server farms. A lot of them do revenue sharing to owners of the coin, which is very important, which gives them almost a stock-like attribute that I think we're probably, look, this is gonna do very well this run, but I, I can totally see the SEC coming after that before the next run. So get into this while it's good. Or a lot of them actually have physical products that again, the coins facilitate the transfer of power between those products. Right now, what is going on in AI is you have like all these giant server farms, all this processing power, all this AI power, which then needs to be distributed and using Web2 infrastructure to do it actually doesn't work well because then you have to have all these signed contracts. It's not decentralized. You constantly run at risk of it being turned off. And it's just really messy to buy into in the first place. It just doesn't make any sense when it all can be facilitated very easily using blockchain technology. So if you want to get more and know how about it, watch my AI coin video. I'm really going to talk about just fundamentals going forward. Now, speaking of ones that have more physical tech, I think Ader, we didn't mention this last video and we mentioned it a while ago in the AI video and it's just done huge numbers. And... I think Node is going to keep going up to a bill, but it might cool off a little bit here because it's been going up even when Bitcoin is being approved. Ader has really kind of cooled off from its last move. And it's actually one of those texts that has a basis in actual reality, like a physical product that allows people to connect to the Tor network and essentially distribute processing power and run transactions privately. And so this is going to be huge as AI and running AI and the privacy behind it becomes a lot more important. And so this is gonna tie into gaming and protection and protection of identity. When people are playing games, you're gonna be holding a lot of in-game assets where you don't want people to know you have these things or be able to tie it back to you. And what this actually, what this narrative is actually tied into is more deep in, which I'm not even gonna get into. That's a whole other bubble that I don't think the viewer of this channel is going to appreciate. But Ader is like really the mix of deep in, AI and gaming all moved to one. And they actually just partnered with another project I'm really, really bullish on, ZKML. <coughs> <clears throat> which is an AI and machine learning protocol that allows the user to cover their footprint and actually tag teams with Ader. So you kind of use these in sync with each other. And so the reason why I'm big into these things is because these are going to tie in to each other and people are going to actually need and have to use these. As soon as the adoption picks up for these things, these coins are going to go Poof. And ZKML is in a really good spot because it's actually smallish compared to some of the other coins. So example, Ader's at 277. I think it's going to a bill, but I think ZK can easily go to the 250 mark, no problem. Another excellent coin that's showing no signs of slowing down in AI is gonna be OPSEC. We talked about this a while ago. 
Uh, it's gonna, it's done like a 2x since then, since our AI gaming video. So what OPSEC does, it's not based in privacy as much as the other coins are. What it does is, again, there are massive server farms, you need to power AI. Using coins to manage and distribute that power makes, it's better than Web2. It, it's like a better solution in buying processing power the Web2 way. So that's just why I'm extremely bullish on it. Because I had an AI company at one time, and the hardest thing about it is not just finding the, the processing power, but then getting the contracts and getting the power relayed to you. And then what if it caps out? Like it's not enough. So you have like 10% over here, 20% over here with one company, all these complicated contracts and you don't need access to the power 24 seven. And so it can get really expensive because some require you to hold the power for the entire month or have a minimum amount of power. It just doesn't work very well. When people are paying with credit cards and contracts and everything, it just is so much better when doing and being done through Web3. So that's why I'm crazy bullish on that. And then finally, I mean, we, we talked about this earlier on Twitter about two weeks ago. It's gone bazooka since then. Destro, I think, like I said last video, is just a gem of gems. I think this is going to do a kosh numbers. I think it has stronger narrative than even if we go back to the big chart. I think this one can go multi-billion. So I'm really, really a big Destro fan. I think it can get up to fetch render numbers, at least the Kosh numbers. So that's when I'm really, really like uh, that. I already said it was a gem of gens last video. It's very similar to a Kosh, I think just more powerful. And so that's a really juicy AI coin. Then of course we gotta talk about Conducts. This is a really weird AI coin because it ties into NFTs, gaming, and AI all together, which is why well, I'm, I'm really into it. Uh, that being said, it's at a lower market cap, kind of similar to ZKML. So if you're looking for like the bigger, pumpier gains, if we get another run up, uh, those are the two coins that are going to be in in the AI coin, ZKML and Condex are just the smaller market caps. That being said, you can see the dips on these things are absolutely no joke. So the smaller AI coins, you you need to have your big boy, big boy pants on. You can see it went from... Uh, all the way up to 18 cents down to 7 cents. So massive, massive crash on this one, wherever we got a little bit of slowdown. That being said, I think this is going to come charge back bigly. It ties perfectly into AI, gaming, and NFTs. And where it plugs in at is connecting AI to the NFTs to actually connect personalities, memories, interactions with your NFTs themselves, giving it a whole different dynamic. So I think when gaming takes off, the technology that this connects with um, and how it's able to put this in the games, able to put interactive NFTs as characters into games, I think is going to be super high in demand. So I think this is going to do crazy well and is frankly, in my opinion, really undervalued right now. And then there's a few that are about to hit the market that I'm not going to get too into because I don't like to talk about newish coins. I let the I like to let them float around a little bit because if you get a new coins when they come in the market, it's up and down, it's volatile, it's all over the place. For example, one of the biggest losses I ever took was investing in Super, which is one of my biggest investments early on when it was flying all over the place. So so we have coins like one thing I'm one that I'm really excited about is hash it's coming out on Tuesday I think that's going to go nuclear and then shortly after that you have coins like gpu.net nuclei skillful AI I think those are going to do really really well and that's going to give you a chance to get into some of these coins you can see like for example Destra when we talked about it it was it was you know 50 40 million dollar market cap these things go once they get figured out and people see the potential in AI, they go to 200, 300 million dollar market caps fast. So that's one of the reasons why I like AI coins a lot. But the thing is, this market is still really misunderstood and there's tons of money looking to flow into it. So there are so many really, really good coins in both these markets. And like I talked about last video, one of the biggest opportunities right now, especially for you, is taking the mindsets and everything I've shared in this video and in my micro coin buying videos, buying videos, and then applying it to these markets. Because what we've seen in the market right now is Bitcoin has cooled off and a lot of the initiative has been taken out of these markets, especially when people are gambling and meme coins. So all the crypto natives, uh, a lot of people have just retired to trading meme coins right now because that's where all the hype and action is. I don't see retail going primarily in the meme coins. It's just too bizarre and too crazy for them. And so I think we're just seeing a lot of incestual money right there, but a lot of initiative to research and find smaller cap projects in AI and gaming has been lost, meaning that a lot of new coins that are launching on the markets are being completely ignored. And these are coins that are going to hit 50, 100, multiple hundred million dollar market caps that people just aren't watching it. So watch my last video on that. And again, I listed a huge list of upcoming coins on my Twitter at ZSS Becker.
as you can check out. There's so many other new coins hitting the market as well, but they're going to start lower market caps and people just aren't super horny right now until Bitcoin starts moving. Now, of course, we are seeing a lot of strength in these coins. For example, Destra is moving really well. Citus has been moving really well, despite Bitcoin capping off. But once Bitcoin starts moving again, and once these coins start doing their movements, these new coin markets are going to get flooded again like they were before. For example, like with Mavia, this is one of the bigger coins in gaming right now. You had no chance to get in at sub $150 million market cap. It just shot up to there instantly. So if you're a new person, like literally everybody just bought it up at 40, 30 million instantly when it came out. We're not seeing that right now. Thus, you can get into these coins at the 10, $20 million market caps, squat for a bit. If you can wait one to two months until Bitcoin does its next move, I don't know when that's going to be. I think it's going to be in the next one to two months. Woo! That's what we're here for. So that all being said, long video, I don't want to talk anymore. Those are the projects I'm really looking at. I am invested in a lot more coins of that, about 40 coins at this point, but I wanted to isolate everything down to the main things I'm looking at or main coins I would really throw into a portfolio. Again, please, please don't buy these coins. Go and use this thought process that I'm using, especially the things I talked about, hype narrative, and a lot of the things I talked about in AI and or gaming to find your own coins that's where you're going to have a huge edge. And if you can understand those coins, you're going to know when to sell the coins. You're going to know when the market cap's getting too high on those coins. Then you can really actually start making money in crypto. Don't be brain dead, dur, 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 influencer talk about coin uh, kind of guy. It never works out. So like always, follow me on Twitter at CSS Becker. That's where you're going to see updates way sooner. There's going to be videos after this video, which break down AI, gaming, and buying microcaps intelligently. I so strongly, insanely suggest you don't buy anything based on this video. And I suggest you go and understand these markets and understand why I'm looking at these coins. And then before you buy any coin, whether I mention it or not, deeply understand the thing. If you're new to this, get three to four coins. You don't need 40 coin portfolios. It's like you're walking into a jujitsu gym and you're trying to learn 40 moves at once. No, just, just get good. No, just, just get good at arm barring a person. Just do that over and over again. All you need is one or two coins to do really well this run to make a lot of money. So that being said, I don't have anything else to say. Awkward exit.